I never intended to become involved in this debate because, as I said earlier today, uh, living in something of, a, of an academic ivory tower, I did not take the new atheists very seriously. When I first read them, uh, I have to admit that I, I was just um, astonished that any excitement could be generated by books that were so incoherent and that, that, that were, uh, had such a, an evidence of historical ignorance, philosophical clumsiness, sanctimony, viciousness. I mean, viciousness is, is a running uh, constant through all of them. And the question, and I, I'm sure I'll be accused of insincerity when I say this, but it's not what I wanted to find. I wanted, when I picked up these books, I wanted to find serious arguments made well. I have no uh, pronounced prejudice against atheists or atheism if I think it's um, motivated by intelligence, by, by moral intelligence, by, mor by moral pathos, by a desire to know the truth and a desire to arrive at some livable ethos. But what I found, unfortunately, were instead uh, fairly childish, disdainful, and, and almost willfully incoherent books. I mean, flippant to the point, uh, flippancy had almost become a philosophy. Um, Christian society certainly never fully purged itself of cruelty or violence, and, uh, and never will. But it also never incubated evils comparable in ambition, range, systematic precision, mercilessness, as the death camps, the gulags, the forced famines, or just the extravagant brutality of modern warfare, uh, even when the democracies are waging war. And looking back over the last century, it's, not, it's difficult not to conclude that the rise of modernity has resulted in an age of at once unparalleled banality and unparalleled monstrosity, and that these are two sides of the same thing, the same reality. And it shouldn't be a surprise to learn, although it was for me, that it is, like all shadows, largely insubstantial. And I think I'll stop there. Uh, thank you.